In today's competitive job market, preparing for an interview at Microsoft can be a daunting task. This video presents the top 25 interview questions and answers that candidates can expect during their assessment process. Our aim is to equip you with valuable insights and effective strategies to enhance your interview performance. Whether you're applying for a technical or non-technical role, these questions will help you stand out. 1. What Microsoft products or services do you use regularly? Which is your favorite and why? I regularly use Microsoft Office Suite, Azure, and Microsoft Teams. My favorite is Microsoft Teams because it enhances collaboration among team members, especially in remote work environments. It integrates seamlessly with other Microsoft applications, allowing for easy sharing of files and resources. The chat feature promotes real-time communication, while the video conferencing tools facilitate effective meetings. I appreciate the ability to create channels for different projects, which helps keep discussions organized and focused. Teams has truly transformed how my colleagues and I interact and work together efficiently. 2. Why are you interested in working at Microsoft specifically? I am drawn to Microsoft due to its commitment to innovation and its impact on the technology landscape. The company's focus on empowering individuals and organizations aligns with my values, and I admire its dedication to diversity and inclusion in the workplace. Additionally, Microsoft's emphasis on learning and professional growth presents an exciting opportunity for me to develop my skills while contributing to meaningful projects. The chance to work alongside talented professionals on cutting-edge technology inspires me to join a company that is shaping the future. 3. Describe a challenging technical problem you've solved recently. What was your approach? One challenging technical problem I encountered was optimizing a slow-running database query that impacted application performance. First, I analyzed the query execution plan to identify bottlenecks. I found that missing indexes were causing full table scans. After creating the necessary indexes, I tested the performance and found a significant reduction in execution time. I also implemented caching strategies for frequently accessed data, which further enhanced the application's responsiveness. Regular monitoring and refining the queries helped maintain optimal performance. This experience reinforced my problem-solving skills and attention to detail. 4. How would you explain cloud computing to someone non-technical? Cloud computing can be understood as accessing and storing data and applications over the internet instead of on your personal computer or local server. Imagine it like using a library. Instead of owning every book, you can borrow what you need when you need it. Similarly, Cloud services allow you to use software and store files without needing them physically on your device. This means you can access your information from anywhere, on any device, as long as you have internet connectivity. It's convenient, flexible, and often more cost-effective for both individuals and businesses. 5. What steps would you take to troubleshoot a slow Windows 10 computer? To troubleshoot a slow Windows 10 computer, first, I would check for any resource-hogging applications using Task Manager. Identifying processes consuming high CPU, memory, or disk usage is crucial. Next, I would ensure that the operating system is up to date and that all drivers are current. Running a disk cleanup can help remove unnecessary files. I would consider checking for malware or viruses using Windows Defender or a trusted antivirus program. Lastly, defragmenting the hard drive, if using HDD, or optimizing the SSD might improve performance. Adjusting startup programs can also free up resources. 6. Design a research plan for a new Microsoft wearable device. To design a research plan for a new Microsoft wearable device, I would start by identifying the target audience and their specific needs. This involves conducting surveys and interviews to gather insights on user preferences and pain points. Next, I would perform a competitive analysis to evaluate existing products in the market. Following this, I would outline key features and functionalities based on the gathered data. Prototype testing with potential users would be essential to refine the design. Finally, I'd establish metrics for success and plan for iterative feedback loops to continuously improve the device based on user experience. 7. How would you market a new data analytics product to small businesses? To effectively market a new data analytics product to small businesses, it's essential to focus on the specific needs and pain points of this audience. Start by conducting market research to understand their challenges related to data management and analysis. Create targeted marketing campaigns that highlight how the product can enhance decision-making, improve efficiency, and drive growth. Use case studies and testimonials from similar businesses to build credibility. Offering free trials or workshops can entice small businesses to explore the product. Social media and local networking events can also be effective channels for outreach. 8. Explain recursion in simple terms that a non-programmer could understand. Recursion is like a Russian doll. You have a big doll, and inside it, there are smaller dolls, each one inside the other. In programming, a recursive function is a function that calls itself to solve a problem. 
Imagine you want to find a factorial of a number, like 5. The function will call itself with 4, then 3, and so on, until it reaches 1. Once it hits this base case, it starts returning values back up the chain. This method is useful for breaking down complex problems into simpler parts, making it easier to solve. 9. What do you think are Microsoft's biggest strengths and weaknesses as a company? Microsoft's biggest strengths include its strong brand reputation and extensive ecosystem of products and services that cater to both consumers and businesses. The company's commitment to innovation, particularly in cloud computing through Azure, positions it as a leader in the tech industry. However, a potential weakness lies in its complexity. The vast array of products can sometimes lead to confusion among users. Additionally, competition from agile startups and the need to continually adapt to changing market demands pose ongoing challenges for Microsoft. 10. Tell me about a time you had to work with a difficult team member. How did you handle it? When I worked on a project with a team member who resisted collaboration, I approached the situation by initiating a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I listened to their concerns and discovered they felt their ideas weren't valued. To address this, I suggested a structured brainstorming session where everyone could present their ideas openly. This led to better communication and fostered mutual respect within the team. Over time, we developed a stronger working relationship, and the project benefited from the diverse perspectives we incorporated. 11. If you could add one feature to Microsoft Teams, what would it be and why? One feature I would add to Microsoft Teams is an integrated task management system that allows users to create, assign, and track tasks directly within the platform. This feature would streamline collaboration by reducing the need to switch between multiple applications. By integrating task management with existing chat and video conferencing functionalities, teams could enhance productivity and ensure everyone stays aligned on project goals. This improvement would foster better organization and accountability, leading to more efficient workflows and a greater sense of teamwork. 12. How would you go about learning a new programming language or technology? Learning a new programming language or technology starts with setting clear goals about what I want to achieve. I begin by exploring official documentation and online tutorials to grasp the fundamentals. Practicing through small projects helps reinforce my understanding. Participating in coding challenges or contributing to open source projects allows me to apply my skills in real-world scenarios. Engaging with community forums and attending webinars provides additional insights and support. Lastly, continuously experimenting and building projects ensures I stay updated and deepen my expertise over time. 13. Describe your experience with Agile development methodologies. I have worked extensively with Agile development methodologies, particularly Scrum and Kanban. In my previous role, I participated in daily stand-ups, sprint planning, and retrospectives, which fostered team collaboration and transparency. By breaking down projects into manageable sprints, we could deliver incremental value and adapt quickly to changes. I also embraced continuous integration practices, which enhanced our ability to test and deploy code efficiently. This approach not only improved project visibility but also empowered team members to take ownership of their tasks, leading to higher job satisfaction and productivity. 14. What do you think are the most important qualities for success as a software engineer? A successful software engineer should possess strong problem-solving skills, as they often face complex challenges requiring innovative solutions. Technical proficiency is essential, including a solid understanding of programming languages and development tools. Communication skills are crucial for collaboration with team members and stakeholders, ensuring everyone is aligned. Adaptability enables engineers to embrace new technologies and methodologies quickly. Lastly, a passion for continuous learning fosters growth and keeps engineers updated on industry trends and best practices. 15. How do you stay up to date with the latest technology trends? Staying current with technology trends involves a combination of methods. I regularly read industry blogs, subscribe to tech newsletters, and follow thought leaders on platforms like LinkedIn and Twitter. Attending webinars, conferences, and meetups allows me to engage with experts and peers, fostering knowledge exchange. Additionally, I participate in online courses and workshops to gain hands-on experience with emerging technologies. Engaging in coding communities or forums also helps me learn from real-world applications and challenges that others encounter in their work. 16. Explain the concept of containerization and its benefits. Containerization is a method of packaging applications and their dependencies into a single, lightweight unit called a container. This approach allows developers to ensure that applications run consistently across different environments, such as development, testing, and production. Containers are isolated from each other, which enhances security and resource efficiency. They are also portable, making it easier to move applications between cloud services or on-premises infrastructure. 
This technology streamlines deployment processes, reduces conflicts, and accelerates development cycles, enabling teams to innovate faster while maintaining stability. 17. How would you design a scalable cloud storage system? When designing a scalable cloud storage system, I would focus on a distributed architecture that employs horizontal scaling. This involves using multiple servers to handle increasing loads, ensuring redundancy and fault tolerance. Data can be partitioned across these servers using techniques like sharding. I would implement a robust API for data access, ensuring that it can handle multiple requests simultaneously. Utilizing object storage provides flexibility in managing unstructured data. Finally, integrating monitoring tools will help maintain performance and optimize resource allocation based on user demand. 18. What strategies do you use for testing and debugging your code? Effective testing and debugging strategies are essential for ensuring robust code. I typically start by writing unit tests to validate individual components, ensuring they behave as expected. During debugging, I leverage tools like breakpoints and logs to trace the flow of execution and identify issues. I also utilize peer reviews, which provide fresh perspectives and often highlight overlooked errors. Automated testing frameworks streamline the process, allowing for quicker feedback. Collaboration with team members can often lead to innovative solutions, enhancing the overall quality of the code. 19. Describe a situation where you had to meet a tight deadline. How did you manage it? When tasked with delivering a software update within a week, I prioritized the critical features and broke down the project into manageable tasks. I created a detailed schedule, allocating specific time blocks for coding, testing, and revisions. To ensure progress, I communicated regularly with my team for updates and feedback. I also eliminated distractions by setting up a focused work environment. By working late hours and maintaining a clear vision of the end goal, I successfully met the deadline while ensuring the quality of the product remained high. 20. How would you improve the user interface of a Microsoft product of your choice? One area for improvement is Microsoft Teams. Simplifying the navigation bar could enhance user experience, making essential features more accessible. Incorporating customizable themes and layouts would allow users to tailor the interface to their preferences, improving engagement. Additionally, integrating a more intuitive notification system can help users manage alerts effectively without being overwhelmed. Lastly, enhancing the search functionality to provide context-aware results could streamline workflows, allowing teams to find relevant information quickly and efficiently. 21. What do you think are the biggest challenges facing the tech industry today? The tech industry faces several significant challenges. One major issue is cybersecurity, as threats evolve and become more sophisticated, putting user data at risk. Additionally, the rapid pace of technological change can lead to skill gaps in the workforce, making it difficult for companies to find qualified talent. Finally, issues related to sustainability and environmental impact are becoming more critical, prompting the need for greener technologies and practices. 22. How do you ensure security and privacy in software development? Ensuring security and privacy in software development starts with integrating security practices throughout the development lifecycle. This involves conducting threat modeling during the design phase to identify potential vulnerabilities. Implementing secure coding standards and regularly conducting code reviews helps to mitigate risks. Additionally, utilizing automated security testing tools can identify issues early in development. Data encryption, both in transit and at rest, is essential for protecting sensitive information. Finally, keeping abreast of security updates and patches is crucial for maintaining a secure environment. Regular training for developers on security best practices fosters a culture of security awareness. 23. Describe your experience with version control systems like Git. Version control systems like Git have been essential in my development workflow. I've used Git for managing code changes in several projects, enabling collaboration with team members effectively. I appreciate features like branching, which allows me to work on new features without affecting the main codebase. Using Git commands, I've learned how to resolve merge conflicts and maintain a clean project history. Additionally, I utilize platforms like GitHub for code review and collaboration, which enhances code quality and encourages shared knowledge among team members. This experience has significantly improved my coding practices. 24. How would you design a system to handle millions of concurrent users? Designing a system to handle millions of concurrent users requires a robust architecture that prioritizes scalability, reliability, and performance. First, I would use microservices to break down the application into smaller, manageable components that can be independently scaled. Utilizing load balancers ensures traffic is evenly distributed across servers. Implementing caching mechanisms, like Redis, would reduce database load. 
Additionally, I would leverage cloud services, such as Azure, to dynamically allocate resources based on demand. Finally, thorough testing, including stress and performance tests, is vital to identify potential bottlenecks before deployment. 25. What do you hope to learn and accomplish in your first year at Microsoft? In my first year at Microsoft, I hope to deepen my understanding of cloud technologies and software development processes. I aim to collaborate with talented colleagues on innovative projects that drive meaningful impact. Additionally, I want to enhance my skills in agile methodologies and gain insights into product design and user experience. Engaging in mentorship opportunities will be a priority, as I believe learning from experienced team members can accelerate my growth. As we wrap up our exploration of the top 25 Microsoft interview questions and answers, we hope you found valuable insights that will help you prepare effectively for your upcoming interviews. Understanding these questions can boost your confidence and enhance your chances of success. Remember, preparation is key to standing out in the competitive tech landscape. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more informative content. Your support means a lot and helps us continue to provide valuable resources for your career journey.